So my, my second presentation today focuses on um, children's films broadcasted on TV and offered on online platforms of video on demand services in Europe. So it's a pleasure for me to fill in the gaps a little bit more. Um, of course, um, theatrical exploitation is the traditional supreme discipline of um, the children's film distribution. And TV as well as online distribution are normally described as ancillary markets. Um, but however, I have as I have mentioned in my first presentation, from my perspective, they aren't so ancillary at all. And um, as Martin also has said, um, I think we are uh, in, the, in the same direction and um, we have to, to focus stronger on all platforms. But we will see. And I do it again this way. <laughs> it works really good, so um, yeah. Um, every day, European children spend a lot of their free time uh, to watch TV, and in contrast to cinemas, TV has a broad daily reach in the young audience. Um, for instance, in Italy, more than 80% of the children living there watch TV every day. Um, in Sweden, it's around about uh, two-thirds of the children, and if we take a look at the TV consumption of children in Europe, we can see that they spend really a lot of their time to watch TV. Again, some examples. Children in Hungary averagely watch TV more than three hours per day. Also in Germany, we have an approximately average um, on one and a half hour per day to watch TV. So in contrast to the cinema, TV can be described as an everyday media with a high reach, especially within the young audience. The internet is also getting more and more important for children. We know from various um, studies that the proportions of children who use the internet increases in Europe and that first time internet users are getting younger. For example, a report published by Livingston and colleagues in 2011, including a representative sample of 25 European countries, points out that on the average, 68% of young people from the age of 9 to 16 use the internet daily or almost daily. Following this report, they are online for averagely 88 minutes per day, and um, of course they have various online activities, but watching video clips online and download music or films, uh, um, these are among the top 10 activities of European children. From the reports of the European Audiovisual Observatory, we also know that online VOD film revenues increase in Europe. And that is why um, the online market is a developing alternative way of children's film or films distribution in Europe, and it's increasingly significant for children. Before I um, will present uh, some of my research results concerning the children's films on TV and VOD, I would like to go a step back and um, refer to Martin's presentation a little bit, um, because when we, talk, uh, when we look at the um, top 20 or 50 film lists in European countries, uh, normally there are much more US films there than European films, also in the category of children's and family films. And um, we import um, much more films from the US than from our European neighbors, even for the uh, theatrical exploitation. And there's a report published by the Swedish Biograft in Tallinn following Nico on his way to the stars. And this report refers a little bit uh, to this question. And I think it is still online, so you can find it uh, online um, after Kitsurayu. So um, let's come back to the status of Subcheck itself, uh, the children's films on TV. And, um, at first, I would like to present to you the main results of the TV program analysis I made and afterwards um, concerning the VOD platforms. But before the objectives and the methods, 
Um, during 2011 and 2013, uh, we conducted two studies at the University of Erfurt, one for TV and one for BOD platforms. And these studies were uh, funded by the Thuringian Ministry of Education, Science and Culture, and as well the Thuringian State Chancellery. It was our objective uh, to analyze the presence of European children's films in contrast to films from other parts of the world, as well as the diversity of type and genres given by the offered children's films. Um, in both studies, we used a broad approach to uh, define children's films, what simply means that we include also family films, because if we would like to compare films from Europe or films from the Asian market and especially the US market, we have to include family entertainment films because most of the US films are family entertainment and not originally produced for children. Um, as in the other studies, when I'm talking about children, we define them as people up to the age of 12 years. Um, at first, we analyzed uh, relevant TV programs in Germany, France, the UK, Italy, Sweden, Poland, and Hungary by using a systematical sample week in spring 2011. And altogether, my student team and I analyzed 391 different public and private television programs on free TV and well as, as well as on pay TV, and we included 914 films for children. Unfortunately, we had not a list of uh, all the films which are broadcasted on TV in Europe, so we have to scan the whole program and to find the children's films which are broadcasted in there. And the VOD analysis costs, uh, consists of 39 portals, and we have analyzed 720 children's films selected from 27 portals, representing the total sample of the 49 portals. And out of 21 portals, a ram random sample of films has been taken in order to heighten the comparability, because some portals uh, provide much more films than the smaller independent ones. Now to the results. Um, in all countries, the proportion of children's films um, of the total TV program uh, was quite low, as you can see in this chart. It ranged from 3% in Sweden to under 1% in Hungary. Moreover, a great majority of the children's films were broadcasted on pay TV, while on free TV there were only a few numbers of film, films for children during our study period. This is an important result, especially um, in the cases of Italy, Germany and the UK, because the pay TV penetration rate is under 60% of the TV household. That means children's films on, on TV are not accessible to a great part of the population in this country. And especially in Italy, they are only an exclusively offer for the pay TV consumers. Based on the children's film minutes in relation to the program minutes, children's films were much more present on films channels than on children's channels, except in France. Especially on Swedish, Polish, and Hungarian TV, children's films are hardly rare or not existent on children's channels. Finding European children's films on TV is a little bit like finding a needle in a lot of hay. Um, the US films dominate the program with one exception, and this is Sweden. You can see in this chart that um, domestic U.S. films share more than half of the children's film program in all other countries. Summing up films which were produced or co-produced by the U.S., we have unbelievable 93% share in the U.K. And after this calculation, U.S. productions and co-productions have a proportion of 52% also in Sweden. Okay. 
This table shows you the proportion of domestically produced children's films on TV, and we can split the countries in two groups. This presentation. So, um, the first one consists of the German, French, British, and the Swedish TV program, where we have a significant share of domestically produced children's films within the program. The second group consists of Italy, Poland, and Hungary, with hardly any domestic children's films. Um, within the last study of the European Audiovisual Observatory, which was published in 2012 or so, um, there was a, a, the productivity of the several European countries concerning uh, children's films in there. And um, Italy, uh, compared to, to Poland and Hungary, produces more European or more children's films. So um, while we have on the one side Poland and Hungary, um, who have to import films for children to, to broadcast on TV. This argument is um, not true uh, to the same extent for Italy. Concerning the film types, we found out that live action feature films for children were much more present than animation in all national TV programs. Only on, British, only on the British TV, the proportion were much more equal. And now I have to hurry up a little bit more, okay. Um, looking exclusively on European productions, the proportions of live action films are even higher. By this, European live action films for children are more established on European TV than European animations. This time we conducted the study. So this slide shows you the presence of various film genres within the children's film program on TV. And in all countries, um, the adventure films, comedies, fantasies, as well as dramas are most, most present genres, while Western or nature films are obviously rare. I'm remembering um, my first presentation when um, I tell you a little bit more about uh, the children's preferences on, the, on genres. Um, you can see that genres like crime or creepy films are not so present. So the TV program or children's films on TV do only partly satisfy their preferences. Nevertheless, because um, of the, the great variety of presented film genres, uh, the children's film program can be described as diverse but I think there is room for more diversity. Um, finally, I would like to add that, especially in Sweden, the given genre diversity depends on the film imports. Um, so where we have on the one side a lot of domestically produced films in Sweden, on the Swedish TV, um, they have not really uh, genre diversity. So that's a dilemma, I think. So we have to import films to heighten the genre diversity and the other side who want to support the domestically produced films. So, and now let's switch uh, to the VOD online platforms. Um, across all analyzed portals, more than 11,000 films were provided, which can be categorized as children's and or family films. That makes 231 film for children and family per portal. In fact, the proportion of films for children varies significantly between the several VOD platforms. Um, while films for children are only a small part on the provided VODs on portals like Amazon Instant Video, formerly known as a Love Film, Film to Home, or Realize or Vuster, they take in a notably share on CEDON, Head, Web, Via Play, Kinder Kino, or Alice Kino. Across all VOD services, most of the offered children's films are European productions. Significantly more than half of the films were produced or co-produced in Europe, 70% are European uh, US co-productions and 37% are US productions. Of course, um, we have also differences between the portals. That means some of the portals focus on European production, while others have much more U.S. content. Um, slightly more films for children were live-action productions, 
by um, comparing the several VOD platforms, again, they differ. So some of them focus on animation, some of them focus stronger on live action. Um, and here are these results concerning the genre. Again, um, half of the films within the sample can be characterized as adventure and comedy, but also fantasy and dramas are much more represented than the other films. Genres like Western, creepy films, or biography are hardly present um, in comparison. So we have a similar genres on TV and VOD. Now we are close to the end of my presentation and I would like to sum up um, the challenges children's films face today. Um, the results of our TV program analysis makes clear that the accessibility of children's films, um, especially um, concerning European children's films, is limited uh, to different degrees. Um, the Swedish TV program seems to be a lighthouse in some aspects, and um, I think it is an evidence that there could be more European films or European children's films on TV in other countries. But of course, we have to recognize the media system differences, national audience differences, and so on. Um, that's why I think in a more general perspective, um, if you would like to increase the accessibility on TV, which is the most important media for children, we have to get the TV channels which are important for children on board. That means the market leaders and the children's channels. Moreover, we have to think stronger on alternative ways of film distribution. VOD platforms are one alternative way and they should be supported. In general, I think um, the creative sector should uh, start to think about the distribution at the beginning of the film development. I think we need more long-term strategies. And anyway, no matter what we do, we have to convince the children, their family and other peers, for instance, the teachers. There will be no children's films industry without the audience. At the end, it is like in a friendship. It, not, it is not easy to build up a true friendship. You have to invest in the relation. You have to call their attention. You have to be a personal enrichment. And you have to take care of your friend. And even if you have to build up the friendship, you have to maintain your friendship. Thank you.